a comeback from NRG. We're only one map in of 2023, and it's been a great game. I'm Yingsu, and I'm joined once again by Achilles and Mimi. Uh, be honest with me, at what point did you think that they were actually going to do it? After the pistol round. <laughs> I would say... Maybe maybe when they got to six, when when they had that six nine scoreline, that's when I started thinking like this is looking pretty nice for for the boys. I think they're going to be able to run it back. And by God, did they? We talked about during that halftime how finesse needed to step up, shifting over to that attack side killjoy. The calls were so much cleaner. They they the desperation that we were seeing from them on the defending side, making the snap calls and having things just completely fall apart. It was gone. Everything was so crisp. They constantly had the right reads, and finesse himself just kind of started rifling again. <laughs> And just everyone on this team showed up individually yeah. into that second half. Like, Crashies in particular, I want to talk about this guy because he was having an insane impact in that second half. So many of those rounds where he was just taking a timing, finding a 2K, 3K, and just continuing to allow NRG to build this comeback. Yeah, it was just, it was nasty from him, but of course you have to give a shout out to Sam as well because he was just instrumental. I mean, even when they were still pretty down and out, he was finding impact, uh, but things have just been looking so much better for the energy. This is the core that we knew they could play like, you know, this is shades of optic coming yeah. back through once they got on the attack side. And I mean, this is one of those rounds that I thought was really impactful in kind of completing this because Koi started this off looking really good. Oh, they retook into Kitchen, they found that one on out. And uh, excuse me, this is actually one where Crashies is just finding some of that impact on its own. And this is a round he lost, by the way, but it's no worries because he was doing so much for the squad there. But yeah, I, I think optic, that point you bring up around the calling is really important because uh, back when it was this, this the optic times, it was always finesse is the best caller ever. And I think people felt like maybe that now coming into NRG, they would struggle a little bit more with that, but it felt so well put together through and through. Well, if there's any evidence that this is no longer optic and this is just NRG, is that map pick and win rate on Icebox. Uh, optic back in the days, they have never picked Icebox at an international event. Yep. And Mimi, we were all really surprised as to why they did. Uh, have they convinced you uh, and shown you the stuff they've been preparing on this map? Yeah, I think we need to wipe away the expectations that we kept for optic and start thinking about what the expectations are for NRG because they've had quite a lot of time in the offseason to cook something up and I think they proved it here on Icebox. They played really well. They were able to handle those kind of double reflanks that were continuing to come through. They were able to shut down the mid control. Every time Koi showed something new, this team had an answer for it and that really impressed me for their first time picking this map. Yeah, I mean, there's only going to be so many times that we're going to be able to actually pull old data for a lot of these teams because there are so many mishmashes. Sure. You know, we have the majority of an optic course, so we can kind of look back on that. They still have the same coach. They have that IGL, so we can say, okay, Icebox, never something they really preferred. For a lot of other teams, we are not going to have that capability. So we have to use every little shred of info yeah. that we can as we go through this tournament and really have these Per first proper introductions to what all these new teams look like. I mean, it is really a new year, a new team when it uh, comes to the lock-in event. Uh, also, the new player, Som. We're going to speak about him in a minute, but here he is in the Verizon high-speed moment of the match. This was absolutely insane, of course, just before the first uh, half ended. I mean, I don't think any of us expected him to do this. No. I mean, that moment where you see the res coming out, he's still holding this back angle of high yellow. That is just moments before a disaster. You see it coming and there's nothing that you can do to avoid it. He just holds down left click, controls his spray, and just melts for the, the, the unofficial ace, I guess, counting the reds. But it was just brutal. I mean, a great way to go ahead and end out that half. And that was really kind of, I think, the big uplifting moment sure. to drive some hype for energy to come back and run it back in that second half. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of people were doubtful of Sam coming into this roster. You're replacing Marv. That's going to be such a, a big shoe to fill. Sure. But he did a fantastic job at it. This guy has never played an international land before. That was his debut matchup, and he was dominating. W streamer, W player, Sam can do it all. <laughs> uh, I mean, one of the players, though, that they did bring in, i got to say, uh, uh, Optic. 2.0, NRG, they can win without Ye. They have just done it. They've just won a map without Ye. They got Ardis in, and he, here he is in the aim lab shoot around. But I do want to speak a little bit about that because on, obviously uh, FNS has mentioned they like the flexibility of Ardis and the fact that he was managing to do that on Sage as well, not even on his kind of uh, more recognizable agents, Mimi. Bodes really well for this roster. Yeah, it, it really did. I, I think that, well, it started a little bit slow, just like the rest of the team. Ardis rebounded with them. And and I think that's kind of the difference between him and Ye. We never really saw Ye playing that Sage. Artist is a player that I think we will see play a lot more flexible roles than Ye used to on this roster. I like that he's just having fun with this. He's just chatting up while he's also just basically hitting pretty much all of these shots. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a, a little bit of a rebound. I'm excited to see what this 
what they're going to look like going into Haven. Do we get Artis on something where he can play a bit more aggressive, have some you know potential bailout tactics, whether it's a jet with that dash or you have the blast packs for the raise, something like that. I would love to see. So hopefully not the Sage because we want to see Artis go kill. We do indeed, but let's talk about Haven here because Icebox, I think we're all kind of like, this could be a bit of a troll pick, but Haven feels like that middle ground, right, between sure. the, these two teams. Colder traditionally, he loves this map. Uh, Optic also, they didn't struggle. I'm sorry to keep bringing them up, but as you said, there's not much else we could, we could talk about when it comes to this team. But yeah. when it comes to those agents, again, are you expecting what well, we saw, you know, Warfen on the Duelist, Shadow sticking to that Sentinel? Are you satisfied with at least what was happening on the side of Koi? Yeah, so I, I think that there was some cool ideas with the wolf and stuff. I think what they were doing on the attack, bringing in, uh, you know, breaking that turret, the updraft, like that kind of stuff, the reason to pick the agent makes sense to me. And he had some good individual moments there. But in the second half, I was not quite as impressed. You don't have a flash initiator in that cop. You only really have the Sova to set him up. And uh, it felt like he was kind of struggling. Yeah, I, it was just unfortunately a little bit brutal. I think he had a, a nice, like, decently hot start, and then it just kind of, fizzled out from there once they got over to that attacking side. That's not necessarily his fault individually, obviously. Sure. The whole core of energy was just playing getting, and basically getting like every single correct read game over games, round over round. So it was just really difficult to try to play against that. But they are going to a comfort pick in Haven. This is their selection, so we need to see a level of performance from everybody. Yeah, absolutely. And for Wolfen as well, I think even though that didn't work out too well in the first map, I don't think you go about and like, we're going to change everything. We're going to take him off that main role. No, this is his first match in VCT, not just sure. an international event. He was a VRL player before this. You have to give him something that makes him comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I think, you know, we can just see the jet come out. A lot of people do favor the raise on this map. It just really kind of depends on where he's going to be at. Where, where is his comfort level? Phoenix? Sure, why not? It's like the one map you can also get away with that on. Uh, but I think it's probably just still going to be some more jet from him. Yeah, I, that, that was kind of my question around this map, because last time we saw it uh, back at Champions, a lot of teams were, were sticking by the fade raise compositions. Optic was experimenting with the Neon back when they were that squad. But now those changes have come through. And I think in some of the challenger circuits, like you've talked about, we've seen way, way more Jet on this map. Yeah, and let's not forget, they can run that double jewelers if they want to, if that is the direction they want to sure. go towards. Let's not forget, Sentinels back at uh, Reykjavik 2020, when they like doing that on let's this map. Let's not bring this up. Yeah, I mean, it works now. No, this is a meta where maybe you could get away with that, but again, it, uh, yeah. there, there have been some role swaps, right? This, this, not every single person is necessarily playing the agents that we like to see them do. Uh, but for NRG, do you think this is where they do perhaps close it out 2-0 if they can do what they did on Icebox? That would be my expectation, but if Koi can rally here, it's a good map for them. If they can get their players focused up, this could be anyone's map still. Remember, we've seen one map from both these teams, but that is all we've seen. There's still a ton of questions going into Haven. Yeah, I mean, curious to see what the, what the select is going to look like at the end of all of this, but uh, the one thing I think is certain is that Shados is still going to be playing the Killjoy. He was looking phenomenal in that, that initial first half, and Haven and Killjoy just kind of go hand in hand, so I fully expect that we're going to be seeing a, a bit more of that. Likely maybe Breach as well from the opposite side, because I think both teams are likely going to be running this. So you want to have that counter util with the Aftershocks to be able to clear out those lockdowns reliably. Yeah, and for Shados, it was his first time um, playing on that Killjoy, I'm pretty sure, back when he was running out on Icebox. Yep. But I think Killjoy is fantastic on this map, because um, I believe nowadays, with the nerfs coming through to Breach, you can't even break that yep. lockdown with the changes. It's so difficult to get rid of that ultimate now. So with most of the normal comps you'd see right on this map, you have no way to get rid of it. Killjoy is probably going to be the defining agent for maps like this, maps like Ascent in our current meta. And I also just want to reiterate how important this map is because we've only seen Koi play one map. And if they don't win here, that is it. They're going to travel all the way here and just play two maps, Mimi, and potentially get sent home. It's brutal. It really is a brutal format. And I'm sure the pressure is mounting, but for that team, they just have to get the vibes up right now. You know, uh, this is sure, it's an important tournament, but I'm sure their focus is going to be on getting ready, getting prepared, being the best team they can be going into the, East, uh, the EMEA VCT League. So this is their moment to just showcase what they have, let loose a little bit and try and find this upset. Yeah, of course, they have big personalities on that roster as well. Let's not forget Stark, so the last time he was on the stage, he was singing, he was dancing. Yeah. I believe they had like uh, a collective group sing song as well. Uh, but we are gonna head into the Prime Gaming Age and select here where some of our questions are going to be answered. Of course, Shados, he debuted his Killjoy for the first time. Artist didn't even play a duelist on Icebox, but going into Haven, Seth, he go. will be. 
Thank you, Artist, for answering my prayers. We get to see him go absolutely ham with the jet, fully anticipating that Wolfen is just going to be keeping it as well because we just have the highlights and here. So Victor's yeah. moved on to yeah, the KJ. Interesting swap oh, okay. there. Victor was normally the dive duelist player on this map, but they are making that change where they're swapping this around to give that role over to Artist. That makes sense, but that does mean Finesse is moving to the Breach. He does love his Killjoy, but I think the Breach on this map uh, gives you a lot as a caller to be able to kind of like set the play yourself, set your jet up for success uh, pretty individually. So uh, that kind of makes sense to me, but I am excited to see how Victor plays because it's going to be a very different style on that Killjoy. Yeah, it's not a day before. He has played it twice uh, before, but like you said, his play style, how is that going to work on this Killjoy? And uh, it's time for us to get into this map and for me to pass it over to your casters, Pansy and Hypox. Thank you. Um, yeah, plenty to talk about, but new map, new start, new agents coming out, new time to look at how these teams approach this. Mike, where are your eyes going to? There's a couple of names I'm starting with, but I'll let you go first. I mean, I want to come back to that. We kind of hinted at okay. the talking about the support system here for NRG. Yes. Now with Ardis kind of stretching his legs, now on the jet, this is where we can actually see what NRG have been working on, right? We can talk about yes. the minimal amount of practice they can have coming sure, in in terms of anti strategy We know that's yep. one of NRG's stronger points yeah, that from, could, from that last could be year. later. That's something to look at down the line. But this year, I want to see Ardis in action here, supported, especially with FNS on the on the breach Ooh. here. So Som as well, flexing Beautiful. across onto the Omen. A lot of questions have been answered from that first map yes. in my eyes. Som's first step out here onto the stage. Brilliant. Absolutely insane performance. On the flip side, for me, Koi, this is now a tall order. We've got Mirror Comp here, where actually it feels like the strength does lie within RG. I agree. Yes, Wolfen did kind of... He did okay. He did, yeah, it, I mean, he did absolutely fantastically in the first half, to be honest, but now... Second half, the... It, it's Haven. It, this, a lot of this draws around how well you can enable the jet. Yeah, I think this is when the strengths, if you look, I guess, holistically on paper, with the core three NRG has for one is great. The fact that you can say it's somewhat interchangeable, not the same player, but still able to facilitate like you'd want to with Ye. You can uh, you know, do that with artists. Some's already proven to be quite a, a, an impactful player as we've already watched them. Who are noting we're not in game just yet. We don't want the players to hop on in, so thank you for your patience. But for Koi, this is, again, this was their map choice, if I'm not mistaken, though, Mike. So you've got to hope that they've got you know, the fundamentals drilled down. They're comfortable enough in that regard. And I'd love to see some of the names stand out here. Shados again, brilliant on map one. Love watching him play. Another name that I'm happy to see kind of reappearing at this point. And, and Starzo for me as well. Used to be one of the, the heroes, if you roll I mean, your mind back. Yeah, you talk about Shados and Starzo. It's, it's a long fall from the top that we've seen yes. for those two players. So to see them re refine themselves yes. really this year and actually all be it in this series now where it's, it's do or die. There's basically one left in the bank here for Koi and they're hopping on a flight home already. Now that's an yes. insane amount of pressure to come yes, out and is. deliver from the get-go, but definitely the potential for them yeah. to achieve it here. I, I mean, there's, there's, there's still just so many questions on both sides of the coin here, but in my eyes, the fact that NRG were able to rally, that's got to be such a huge wave to ride coming into map two. Well, that's one of the big things. If you want to look about the kind of momentum oh game, the confidence game, yes, I think the logical choice is that you'll then, of course, now put that with NRG. Um, if you're, you're a little bit more removed away from the game, you've got to say Koi's performance initially was outstanding, and the building blocks off the back of that are something that is a hugely, a huge tantalizing prospect for the yeah. future. But we, we want to talk about within the realm of what this game is now, do they have enough left in the tank coming into this map? And I guess as well, just just sorry to carry on from Go that, ahead, the, the real upset is, is actually one of the things that we famed Cold Amenta for was, was kind of his on-the-fly trouble duty, right? His yes. ability to formulate some sort of a response when things weren't going their way. Just didn't see that in the second half. There wasn't enough kind of consistent uh, positives to draw on in some of those rounds. NRG just ran away with that second half. And, and even if he did, I think to an extent in my mind, if you do start seeing your crashes of Victor hit their win conditions of what makes them one right, of the exactly. best, yeah, it's yeah. very hard to even interject into that That was the wave that NRG rode. That Correct. was like, Correct. yeah, crashes of Victor are happy just get down and dirty deep on backside, yes. let's follow up on them. There it is. So again, you're seeing some of those key win conditions hitting for some of these teams at such curious times, but it's map two. Once again, thank you for your patience. They kind of teased you a little again into the game, but now we are ready. The players are locked in. Everything is good. And now it's danger time for Koi, right? Life on the line, a round or two difference, and now they're in this position. On the defending side, we look at a couple of things. How does Wolfen look in this? Is he facilitated to the same degree? Can he have impact here? How does the rest of the roster slot around that? And similar questions for NRG. I must spin the wheel. Both teams here, heavy emphasis towards mid. Drones will trade off here. I think tags on both sides of it, but NRG not really going to find any damage to follow up on. Artists actually catching one as they drift away from the front of B. 
I'm just looking, yeah. Both smokes committed on the side of Som, so they're going to have to wait out here. Deep hold towards CT from Starzo and Coldamento. Actually, Starzo all the way towards back site, actually, ready for that fault line, but LG will find themselves a wide open C site. No resistance on the way in here, so very safe plant. Should be open for long here. That's hey, look at the coming through. Yeah, this is early. This is super early. Not safe in those post plants either. They want to get the blood drawn now. Now, yes, Wolfen's on the side, but he needs to get a frag, and he does, but only one. The back line hits, and it's Shados battering down NRG. Wow. Gorgeous offset on the timing there on that retake, Mike. It was just in between that safety of the post plants being set up. Literally on the back of that spike tap coming through. Koya ready to explode on the back of that recon. Paranoia sent through. Actually got to credit Atsley. Her ability to hold on to that, all of that utility from that initial trade-off in mid. Beautiful stuff from Koi to open up round one here on Haven. Yeah, and Wolfen just happy to lead the charge here for Koi as well. Goes one for one, but my eyes open. Oh, what was that, that so short. Yeah, no, what? Yeah, no, trade me. It's fine. Shados, if you want to come in and do that, I, I will take the one for one trade on the site. Go ahead. Snap like that. Go ahead. Ooh, force buy. Okay, we've got the buys coming out, stingers. <laughs> Still trying to ride those stingers. Look. Look. I'm fine. Not giving away too much just yet. Well, this does actually have a Spectre as well. Okay. It's only not cheap. Trex is in for a world of trouble here. And the panic, you can see it there. Didn't realize what he was up against by any means. And FNS with an early punish. I love this smoke here just outside Bricks. They deny the information. LG happy to creep up behind it. And actually, yeah, the Wolfen's pin comes screwed. on to hell here. Yeah, Wolfen's in so much shape. How's he won that fight? Oh, just look good for it there. Maybe an outgun, and over. Peek on it, but a quick trade, and FNS is keeping them in this game. But on towards the site, Starko only going to get one. The trade's going back in for Goldamenta. Victor there. They are on the side. They're still trying to battle it out. Shados can't do it again. And this time, NRG brawl it out. So the fact that Wolfen lives there, like I said, the recon ping comes through just at the right time. Oh, this unfortunately can't find it, but luckily the spacing spot on from NRG. They're able to follow through on that space created by Ardis in that cloud burst. Oh, that's lovely. So I, I love this smoke here. It just allows for so many different ways to approach this A long. A little overzealous from Trex. I'm not going to lie to go for that orb. Yeah. Yeah, it With no dart bit... behind it, no drone behind it. So... No real confirmation of presence at all. And like I said, that smoke is there to deny information. Yep. We'll be kicking the top of that, but an opportunity to turn it around, but it's certainly substantial lighter investment back. We have frenzies, a couple of sheriffs, um, no armor behind it either. So if any damage does come in, it would be quite surprising. Still looking like they want to look like they're continuing the C piece, but already the rotation coming in. I think NRG just immediately feeling that that's going to be either a stack or a very, very early rotation coming through. And right, rightly read. Nice call. So completely free A site here. FNS feeling no pressure should facilitate the plant very comfortably. Frenzy, two sheriffs to work with on the way back through, but Starzo tagged up. That fault line should be coming back online, and it is, yet yeah, recon as well. So a couple of tools, but it's as if Koi might just be waiting for some exits here. Candy. I want to plant the seeds that maybe that there's going to be some sort of retake attempt to come mm. through, but I don't think they want to give away any more no. alt orbs here. In terms of the early progress made by Crashies, Victor, FNS. So close. Might just want to fall to the spike. A wise decision here from Coit. Yeah, it looks like the right call. And now the commitment. Yeah, you're absolutely on the money, Mike. I mean, you think about this here, this ultimately gives them yeah. potentially access to the Rolling Thunder, the Lockdown, it's, maybe it's even really the Hunter's Fury. It's a really impactful ult yeah. that you just... You don't want to be giving it up for free. So two to one as it stands in RG. Lovely turn in the second there. The punish on Trex, he'll be kicking himself for that. But again, need well, to take Well, with that diligent. fumble on A long, now I want to see what Koi's attempt is to control that. If, if NRG are going to kind of rely on this smoke as a default setup early on, uh, I mean, what's the response from Koi? First time we've seen some emphasis towards A here in terms of numbers, but NRG aren't there to greet it. With that alarm bot placement here down at the bottom of C long, I feel like this might even be a quick C piece. Yeah, early operator coming out as well for Wolfen. Round four, straight on to it. And you're absolutely 
on it this time around. See piece to be seen, looking at Shados here, committing to the site, and actually gets away with straight up murder until then. Effortless with a quick trade, the classic, classic. doing more than enough, <laughs> apparently. That's going to be gutting for them. But the site not quite fully under control just yet. FNS goes down, a little bit chipped towards Victor, but mostly gets away unscathed. The numbers advantage here for Koi. They're all on the site. NRG unable to back away from this. And yeah, Koi just collapsing on towards them. Victor, a 1v3 required. They're playing together on this. It's going to be rough for Victor here. Might get the first on one. They line up a little, but actually it's called a mentor. <laughs> Keeps the it clean. step back saves them there. And three will survive. Operator saved as well. I like the little swap, swap out there for Wolfen to be able to dash back onto site. Nice little bait, actually. As soon as he dashes, Trek's posted with that Operator. Ready to punch up. <laughs> yeah, and the aftermath leaving us at 2-2 now. You look at the economy, still going to be fair enough. Yes, Wolfen might be a glass cannon into this, but again, still able to make that operator work. So on the other side, only Victor thus far going to get the ult going. FNS one away and Crashy's one away. So still two very much on the cusp here. Could be something to note. And Koi finding response. The Seaside seems as though it was going to be a little bit of a, a pressure point that NRG wanted to look towards and Wolfen this time willing to fight on towards it. So it does. I was going to say Wolfen crouches on the wrong side of Platt there, especially seeing as he's glass cannon with that recon <laughs> pinging him. He was actually over on the left side of Platt there to try and avoid that dart. We'll see how Shados handles this. We haven't seen too much flex through Garage just yet. We haven't seen that look come in. Well, default shock dart to try and deal with potentially the alarm bot or something placed in the middle of Garage. Still that nano swarm on the door. I think that's on the back of the turret contact. Yep. And it's a bit of a spray. Doesn't really find too much for it. And we'll have to now rescind the control towards Garage initially. No big hit towards the site, but now with that amount of utility coming in, they know that they've lost that. So many ults now coming through. This will be a full retake at this point. I'm looking to see what's anyone trying to work anything in him. No, this is all just going to be respect the plant. They'll probably push up a little towards CT. You've got a deeper garage hold, but other Concern than that... Concern being, there's no flank here. Nope. So, Som's going to feel really comfortable at the bottom of C long here. A couple of members of Koi may be looking to flank garage, but with a double stack in there from NRG, this is problematic here. I haven't got that same pop from CT this time around. Uh, they absolutely don't. There's, there's very little pressure coming in in unison here. Victor finally feels it coming in through the top of Garage. That looks like a high priority. And yes, the paranoia catches, so they do manage to start taking in towards Garage. Looking towards CT. They don't have to find the same success. Crash is holding them back with a second. And now Golden Menton needs to do some serious work. Three is all he can find, and that's all he's going to get. Sarzo going to take that operator out of there, and the two will remain. Som and Ardis still alive, and NRG going to make it to the third. If we see Koi continuously rely on this operator, I mean, we've talked about credited their ability to swap it out to Trex previously, then Wolf and Dash on, but yep. I want to see some early round value from it. Now, whether or not so NRG are, you know, are doing a good job here of prioritizing towards C Long, sure. maybe trying to navigate away from Wolf and, but Koi need to see a return on this investment because if they're going to play these retake setups, the operator becomes such a disadvantage for them. Also currently has the operator. Wolfen on, Wolfen on the blade storm, yeah. yeah. Okay. Want to see how that looks. Again, this is what we're just learning. Is it's just how do these teams kind of shape up here? Can you hear that rattle through? Early utility to deny space. And this smoke again. I've actually slipped a player up behind it as well, so I'm going to play off the back of that and get quite, quite early in towards sewers. A big positive. Uh, right, Wolfen's here with the blade storm. There's a recon bolt behind it just to clear the space. NRG. Might actually use that to her advantage. Koi might feel like this is a little bit of a pump in the early round. Oh, Wolfen's going to so have his hands full. He's got to do well here. He needs it. And a one-to-one -one trade felt like he needed a little more, but Trex quickly on the case. Going to backfill that and take down Artists, so keep favorable numbers. 4v3 and they from fall Starzo. away. Beautiful flash from Starzo there as well. All the way back from that CT arch. That actually gives Koi the numbers advantage here. FNS maybe just waiting on that fault line to come back. So we've got two flashes to work with, but lots of tools at the disposal of Koi. What? Mm. Some had both smokes up there yeah, as well. Yeah, he had everything to play with still. 
Not sure if they felt that they had that for free. I'm not sure what the read was there. Maybe feeling Trex was the only one on the site, but again, the flash had to come from somewhere. Plants come in, but it's two to try and hold it. No flank on this either, all through CT or Heaven. So yeah, FNS has to be super aggressive here. How are you gonna do so much damage? Yeah, Shade, Austin, Trex. Quick work, light work. Uh, NRG feel like they got the read there that Koi are gonna rotate off a site, but certainly feels a little uncomfortable to see an Omen with both smokes available. Just shift walking out of short. A dreamy for Starzo on the other side, obviously. Gonna yeah, offer an just, easier start on that. Maybe just looking to catch a timing on somebody, catch somebody off guard. Well, maybe if it was faster, you could have caught when Trex was falling away from that, potentially. Um, but yeah, maybe not noting there could be an additional player here if that quick trade. And maybe feeling, yeah, after this kill, he had the timing to maybe slip up. But there was a fair amount between that kill and the time he pushed up to her. Anyway, 3-3. Three, three. Opportunity now for Koi to build. Operator back in play, but it's called a mentor this time with it. This is very curious. It's really being filtered around the place. Not sure how I feel about it. And it's off to a quick start for artists. Straight through towards Sewer. Nothing to really deny him. You've got one player on the other side, and that will be Shade or sitting yeah. deep towards CT. So this side will be theirs. Well, I mean, they've got the lockdown. You can see they've got the, the nano swarm to try and just delay the plant a little bit, but there's already bodies in place here for this retake. They almost want to see the lockdown set up here as they've got actually the, the counter it, nano swarm yeah, for it. it. Yeah. So. Looking to see what they try and make this work with. A swing and a jump just off the back of the contact, but great trades for Artis. Finding two being pivotal to this round. Make it a third, Artis dicing them up. And just holding towards CT, waiting for that next victim, that next player who dared do it. And no one feels that they can. Trex, ooh, damage done, yes, one but HP for Artis. unconfirmed. Artis can now back away, hopefully with his life. And the damage has been achieved here. That quick take towards A was perfect. I, I think maybe Koi are just thinking there's a Hunter's Fury available. Like there's too many things that we can't pin this retake around the lockdown. But then you've got to question why that's the setup initially. Yeah, if you're not going to play around it, maybe try and post up towards long, try and take the fight there. Not sure, but like I'm saying, the, 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 the one kind of way to make sure that you find some value off that is to make sure that lockdown goes as basically as the spike is being planted. I'm not even sure actually as well with Trax posting the Hunter's Fury there's an opportunity to counter crashes. Yeah, lots of questions there. If that was the plan from the get-go, why they didn't follow through from that. Maybe just a frantic call there, bodies there yeah. early enough for When we look at these teams, they're not quite in that full form yet. We're still seeing a couple of those arrows being quite exploitative at this point. Mid pressure seen this time. Starzo's got to be very careful here. That owl drone, very much. Yeah, Starzo's lucky to be alive. Yeah. Very lucky to be alive. Yes, there was backup there, but again, early presence towards this B site has been pulling the rotations. Poor Starzo back. Is there a fully supportive role here on 42 HP? So got some utility to work with. Two away from that rolling thunder as well. And an NRG regrouping towards C Long Wolfen. Unnoted as of yet, but that operator is back online. Doesn't I really have a second leg to this defense, though, so... I need to see a round from him, Mike. Yeah. I'm a bit worried here. He's going to be feeling a little rusty, but that's a great shot. Takes down Artist and slips away towards CT. They don't need much more than that. Maybe try and hold backside control, but that's about it. Now Spike's going to go down. You're Potential absolutely right. Here. This should be the one. That was late, though. Yeah, didn't quite Man. catch the timing on the paranoia there, either. Stump not going to do it. Now Som left to his own devices able to get to safety, not punished either. Koi struggling to capitalize on some of this utility and FNS. Feeling it, gets involved. Loses his head, but takes down one with him. Uh, Koi, considering the safety, you can see already, they're retreating. Yeah. FNS, I mean, luckily he swings in there to try, I don't know, maybe to cast one off guard, but they're trying to retrieve the operator yeah. as well. Opportunity for him to just find two or three inside that smoke. Crazy play from FNS. I, I, I gotta say, I come out of that round scratching my head a little bit. Is that all on the back of holding on to the operator? They didn't even save that. No, they didn't. Another situation where the lockdown's available for a retake, and Koi have looked pretty good on some of these retakes. Yes. It's just like they're, they're missing that one step, that next layer, which I'm kind of waiting to see that lockdown be part of. This was the first 
shot from Wolf and did manage to make it out. And sadly, that utility, you can see it just not finding purchase there. And FNS just <laughs> heating up, going in on it. It was enough to send him walking away, though. So I, by all means, three to five the now. Question I have at that point, Arcoy looking to save that operator with four standing and a lockdown of it. That's why I come it away scratching like my head. It felt like it, which I don't know if I love just yet, but. And, and look at the pressure. Early pressure from NRG towards long. No subtlety about it this time, and three players on the other side. So they continue this way. Wolf and Drex the both really on this. Flash on long here. And yeah, this is when trouble a plenty. They can't escape. They can't run. Oh, it's a crash. He's catching them by the heels. Huge punish with the util coming out. Lovely combo work coming in with FNS. And now the sights on the platter. Starzo has to respect it. This could be another three man safe. It could be, yeah. Now, this is one where actually don't even bother with that lockdown. Crash is still without Hunter's Fury available. Yeah, Koi already making their way over towards Garage. Not seeing that same level of confidence we saw on Icebox. But have been knocked just a little bit yep. coming into this map too. And again, that pressure mounting with every round. Elimination looming here for Koi. You can see the smiles creeping onto NRG's faces too. Crash, he's starting to look I mean, this is where they start to thrive, these yep. players. And you need this. It is a new roster, right? And it, all the practice is great. All of the, you know, everything you do leading up to this, but it's about how you play in the game. The officials, there's no practice like officials. And seeing them hitting confidence now, looking nice with the synergy, lovely combo work coming in. Beautiful, beautiful stuff so far. That extends the gap to three rounds. It's another round that they're just forced to try and cling to these weapons. Very few positives to take away from some of these rounds, McCoy. Love this creep up as well, and we're almost in the right place at the right time. Yeah. It looks like they're ready to pop off of a flash to clear long, but the Rolling Thunder posted just as they're about. I think it's going to come on the back of a contact of a smoke or something. Yeah. If NRG put down a smoke on Heaven or towards Spawn, that's when they're going to try and clear through, but I'm just not seeing that decisiveness from Koi once again. It's crediting how proactive they were on Icebox and taking space back, denying space Absolutely. from NRG. The Haven, a very different story now, Lauren, and I'm, I'm already starting to get worried. We're in round 10. It's a 6-3 scoreline, but the nature in which these rounds are going, I'm already very concerned. I, I think the concern's warranted, and uh, probably as to why Barbar's hit the panic button here. Hit the timeout. We've got to see a switch up coming out of this one. I need to see intent. I need to see commitment behind it. I get why you're trying to save as the core three to try and keep those you know, the, the buys coming in, keep it over that strength. But at we some can't point, you've got to. Away from three defensive rounds nope. in a row saving. No, not, not, not like this. Not against someone like NRG. They will continue to spiral. Their money's looking beautiful. They now. know they're winning the mental game. Absolutely. All that says to NRG is like they are terrified on the Yeah, retake. they don't even try it. Yeah. There, there's no negative for NRG in this. They are happy with that. Now, for Koi. You've got to also remember, I guess, to an extent, the mental impact from map one. Losing in the fashion they did after being so close is is incredibly, incredibly heavy to deal with. Let's see if there's a change up after the timeout. Let's see what Bar Bar's got for the boys. Got to see something from this three-man setup on eight. Now, the harder initially part. Here. Brilliant. First tick in the box. Wolfen, does he get caught on the way back out? No. Lovely. Come away. Completely untraded first blood here, and it's SOM to fall. No smokes available for NRG. But they're already in on the beast side somewhat. Cold Amenta really keeping note of that though. Does find Victor, but it was Artis who slipped through. And yeah, Koi now starting to go through the motions. It's it's working perfectly. Koi looking comfortable now. And Artis last one alive. It ain't pretty, but he gets the job done. Cold Amenta. No worries in that. And the difference there is night and day. Yep. Flawless round. Prime gaming flawless round coming in four to six. But this is when I was a little worried for Koi because obviously, so let's say we came to the conclusion, a little bit more aggression and confidence behind it and commitment behind it could be a good answer for Koi. Obviously, if you're NRG, you're also aware of that. I was waiting to see a default, see if that would come in. But this was lovely from Orphan. Job but, done, gets I mean, away. The next question on the list is sustainability, right? How many times now? Do you have that set up and ready exactly. for everywhere? Yeah, you, yeah, that you have that one that. opportunity to come out of the timeout, catch somebody off guard, disrupt that kind of well, default look, early on. Look at FNS straight away. Looking to try and find the punish on this one. They sat ready for it though, turning the flash as well. And Wolfen just getting his head into this one. Straight in once it doesn't get it, gets denied. And Ardis sends him away. It's the player's life too, does not fall on a trade. Again though, where's the second layer to that? There's two other members 
of Koi on A site, and Wolfen's the one to... Dash prefer it. I mean, you never want to be the person to have to dash on and take a 1v1 with Ardis, but... No. Okay, I don't mind this, Hats off to the kid. He's going to hear this alarm bot as well, I think. Cover going up. Yep. Well. Does anybody see the smoke? They're going to see it when they get past these boxes. Cold Amenta, I feel like he's dead. Yeah, absolutely dead. NRG's timing could not have been better. Falling away from this Cold Amenta, maybe feeling they were still meandering around A long, and, and there actually are still two players here. Som's going to get a dirty lurk behind this. They're actually double gonna, pump. They're going to oh. deny them from saving. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Perfect read again. Just backfilling this off the contact towards long. They knew that they'd have to respect that and pull those three players back to potentially deal with the C hit. Man. There was a lot of players seen. So again, this is perfect calls. Lovely reads. But actually, Starzo still sharp for one, but he needs a bit more. There's still four players alive here, and you're down to Trex and Shados. They've been sitting, playing for these, you know, uh, saves and trying to keep these weapons up. And Trex is still do desperate for it because Ardis was maybe overheating a little in that. I'm going to try and punish Trex again. Still dancing around, but he's got five HP. There's only so much one man can do, and it's all but done. NRG, pull it right back in. I say we're starting to see some of these plays that we're kind of talking about, right? There's smiles on the faces from NRG. Ah, oh, this updrafting into the Aldrone on heaven. Coming into the last round here. Have that operator available. Everything but the Hunter's Fury for Koi. Again, NRG firmly in control of this half. But, but, but four to seven isn't a terrible half if they convert the last round. I mean, I well, I hate the fact that we're in round 12 and we're still talking about the same lockdown I was seven rounds ago. And we've seen a couple of setups for a retake. Yeah. Well, no point saving now. In we go, sight now taken. Ardis plants the flag there and actually takes a scalp off of Trex. What a shot. Trex looks so unaware there was even a chance of that, and Cold Amenta chomping at the bits to try and maybe find a fight through CT. No. And we're actually going to see the lockdown coming in, but this time it's... It's all a fake. Yep. Oh, my God. The spike's over towards eight. Well. I... And you've still got the slip through here as well from Ardis. He's still doing them dirty. Vectus already. NRG. This is perfection from them. And now Starzo. Starzo doesn't know where C. it's planted. He doesn't Starzo know where it's planted. C. Lost oh, no. and confused. It's painful. If you're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the penny's dropped. The oh. penny's dropped. And this is the thing. NRG just absolutely running rings yes. around Koi. Switching side. And that's a really uncomfortable finish to that half. Yeah, that will take the wind out of your sails by, uh, by a country mile. You had to respect it, right? By all accounts, it looks like they hit the site. There's a lockdown. There's Ardis over and towards Garage, but all in the meantime, they're still holding mid. They're still slow creeping towards the A site. And they're gutted for it. I think it. Barbar knew it wasn't safe. I think he was also aware. I think uh, Shake It Off, four to eight. It's still a better half than the first map, technically, but it's the way it looked, Mike. It didn't look pretty, but that's for the desk now to talk about. Thank you very much, Pansy and Hypoc. Yes, a much better half for NRG uh, on this map already. And how many times have they forced Koi into saving Mimi? I don't think I've ever seen a team save that many times rounds in a row. Yeah, that was brutal. I, I want to talk about some of these post plants from Optic. And we had one excuse me, specific round to take a look at in that regard. For Koi, their whole game plan in this map was really that we're going to give sights, we're going to play retake with our Breach and Sova, but that just wasn't working out. Take a look at this one. Wolfen gets the opener. They can completely back off C and go for another one of these fast retakes. But look how ready this NRG squad is for it. They put a molly forward, then finesse. Once he runs out of utility, knows the best he can do is go forward, make an individual play, and Koi is just forced to save. Consistently, this game plan that Koi had going in was utterly shut down by NRG. Yeah, like you said, I, you know, how many times, I think it was around three or four at, at the very least, that they were forced to save. It was just so well played here, round over round. I mean, sure, Koi, they do get that timeout call. They come in, they get a surprise jump on NRG, they catch them off guard, but then you go into the very next round and it just can't work again. They just simply can't out, out game right now. Uh, Finesse, he has just ascended, he's reascended to optic <laughs> status. Uh, looks like that first map, that first half rather of Icebox was just shaking off the rust a little bit. It's been a while since he's been up on the stage, but he and Ardis in particular, the way that they've been layering and chaining together their utility, playing off one another has been absolutely fantastic. And that is something that Koi has been lacking. You're talking about these attempted retakes, etc. 
as we get ready to shift over and have energy on the defending side, I can only imagine that if they do get into a retake scenario, that same synergy is going to come into play and they should be able to get the retake time and time again. So Koi needs to step up. It's do or die for them now. That is so brutal for Koi here. You lose this map, you're out. You're sent home immediately. It is such a tough situation for this newly put together team to be in. And now there's a lot of questions about this second half. Do they have it in their tank? It really has to start with this pistol round. I mean, luckily getting four means it's completely doable here. We want to see some of that synergy that NRG have shown on the side of Koi going to this last half because Pansy and Hypok, if they don't, they're going home. That's the beauty of this tournament, the brutality of it all. For something so beautiful as NRG's comeback on map one to exist, the potency of it, the capability to pull it off, it has to be this dangerous, this much on the line for it. So we go back in in the second half. Koi with four rounds to the name, NRG with eight. How much can Koi do to pull this game back in? Can a third potentially come through here? Or energy just a little too sharp? Be able to get this part down, Starla eating that first shot. Uh, Found a second one, even find him. <laughs> Somehow skips away. They're trying to crunch slow. Look at this off tempo hit. I love it. Trying to catch the players who are still on the side, which they might just do here. Victor, lovely. Going to get one, but a quick trade from Orphan. Still standing, can't stand much longer. The site now waving the NRG banner is quite relegated towards long, but can they hold this plant? Som's on it. it. He ain't moving. He's looking pretty safe right oh, here. No. Som ain't gonna move. Oh, Trix! He got him off it. And now Crushy's with the oh, oh, oh. Trix! You absolute god! Saving Koi in the first round in the second half. I don't want to see how close show it was to it. the diffuser. Show me it again. I Please. don't even want to know. I want to see it. I have to. I mean, <laughs> thank god. Because that, that would have been the worst way for the second half to start, would be three people sat at the bottom of sea long going, oh, he's stuck he's it. He's still diffusing. Yeah, he's stuck that. It's on ping the spike. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good, Drex. Bloody I hell. Mean, I got to say it again, sorry to be the bearer of bad news. It's that sort of round, it doesn't really feel no, like there's going to be sustainability, right? You don't get given many of them. No, against you don't. NRG. No, you don't. But again, also, it shouldn't have come down to Som pulling off the pseudo ace. Yep. So you know what? If that's what it takes, if that's Swings the spark, then um, so be it. Bring me something, Koi. Show me a little bit of that fire here. We have a great idea. We've got some incredible players. Can they close the gap? NRG coming back into this, respecting the second round here. Not the force back in. Nothing really. I think, yeah, just a frenzy for artists, and that is it. So you want to be looking at Koi, five alive plant coming in you cannot make errors now you're on this attacking side with the scoreline as it was precarious and it didn't feel like a good first half so let's see if the recovery is there but again do they feel the stack there's four players here do they care I smoke with the Som as well, just to try and deny this dash through from Wolfen, but it's actually tricks to find it. FNS will find a response actually, and is oh, that weapon no. retrieved? No, there's no, two! No, 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 this is such an error! Ardis is still alive, but it's only Ardis, and thankfully, Shados was still alive. The turret will at least give away the game. That got so dangerous. For a second there, it could have swung. For a moment, I, I think that was a rifle retrieved on site. And, and again, they still have that safety net of Som smoking off that cross towards default. Gives yes. them a little pocket to deny Wolfen and really actually disrupt that spacing behind it. Luckily, Trex, I think, finds a kill through that smoke. Wolfen made a bit of a meal of that as well, looking kind of panicked. He was under a lot of pressure at the start there, but I want to watch this yeah, again. Yeah, this, this kill right here. Trex really the one to deny that rifle Trex. coming back to bite Koi in the ass, honestly. What a hero. From the first round to this already, starting to try and mitigate the danger. But you've got to say, NRG are always dangerous. They're finding little bits of pieces. Som, are you trying to set this That's into motion? That's going to be a this chunky paranoia this if it's thrown. could be huge. Uh, oh, how dare you do this to me? I've been absolutely debated. <laughs> and now it's a little too late, Som! you got to run, you got to try and hide. Yeah, luckily, a little bit of utility behind it. Counter utility to slow that roll if they're trying to maybe springboard into that. And they can at least dismantle that first hold here. What the ste second step to this round is for Koi. Not much achieved mm -mm. at the back of that information. And actually, NRG already completely reshuffled their formation. But I love this posting up some deep on C long. Yeah, yeah. You have a proactive, not, uh, not hyper proactive, but you know, at least taking a potential fight here, crashes. 
they're keeping great information on the extremities, which is still very kind of telling that they're still working mid, they're still towards garage. I mean, what are Koi waiting for though? Finally, they're going to drift back into garage here. The alarm bot was dealt with earlier. Still a seconds. turret to catch this contact, but yeah, the clock really has run down here and the spike is long, so. Okay. Okay, Cold oh, Winter okay. just finds a drive by. Yep. yep, round saved. There we go, that's exactly what you're to depend upon, but. The three players left alive. Anything to look at here? Not really. They're not in a position to really challenge. Plan comes in. Be nice to recover some of these rifles if possible. You can see Stars are already looking towards that. And yeah, at this point, just keeping what they have. Uh, now, now when we no, here's the thing. People look at go, well, they won the round, so what's the problem? You're looking at trying no, to No, 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 I, I come back to that there. It's, <laughs> it's Cold Amenta coming up. The second player on C long there with the spike is Trex, who's kind of bound to his utility there ahead of that execution. Someone's wins that 1v1 with Cold Amenta. And Wolfen couldn't have swung. He couldn't have made it around to be able to swing long either. He was going out of garage. It, it, there's no way that timing would have worked for him. So it's, again, by the finest of margins that actually quite find this, but it's going to put them within touching distance. It certainly does. And that's the bottom line. And that's big. Taking one of the rifles away makes these kind of reinvestments incredibly difficult and tracks. Desperate to do damage. Oh, it's down 25. Looking like they're going to hold it. Okay, nice. Yeah, keeping the two rifles, but that's all they're going to get. On the other side, the reinvestments are fine. Their economy's in a pretty decent spot for Koi now. How far can Koi take this? They need, CNRG they need will it. ride this one out, so it's almost given we're going to have a tie game here. Let's go. I'm here for it. Look, I'm already sweating, and it's not even because of the game. All right. It's about to get a little little heated in here. But you're, you're right. I, I want to see Koi play percentages. And when we say that, it's such a, a boring statement to make, maybe for those not in the know. It, it, it is a percentage-based game. Explain it to VLR, of course. I was going to at least flame Reddit, put it in VLR, not VLR terms. No, it, where, you, you put in VLR lower than Reddit? That's yeah, crazy. I am. Yeah, That's, yeah. <laughs> you're wild for that one, Mike. Your 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 mentions are going to be a little rough for a while, but you know what? Now at this point, it's just I want to see Koi try and play at least percentage Valorant, where you're giving yourself the best chance possible. The way right? they did on Icebox, I got to say, right, again, that attacking it, it, side, yeah, oh, divine. But remember how low that clock was as well with that spike on long. Let's just kind of like tie it all together. It was about 30 seconds at that point. Yes, Wolf and one on the site, but. I'm a little bit worried at this sort of conjuncture if this starts going wrong. Yeah, and the question comes back to kind of just thinking back to what was happening for Koi outside B there. I mean, Starzo kind of waiting for a flash, waiting for something to, you know, NRG to show themselves, expose themselves somewhere. And that's why I'm kind of left questioning why then the audible comes that, yeah, let's re-hit Garage, re-clear through Garage. Whether or not Starzo is going to plant a, a fault line or a flash outside B just to kind of plant the seed of doubt, I'm not entirely sure. Right okay, but we're talking about percentages. I want to see them be diligent and trying to clear towards A because they walked into the stack before, and if they do this again, there's now a little bit more potency behind it. Four players here, and they felt enough pressure. They're not sticking around on this, and that's the right read considering NRG had four players moving down towards long with utility behind it. Now, Victor on the other side, what does he have? It is just the stinger. I say just because of where we're at right now. He's going to hear these steps. He's going to call it out. Uh, Spacing again. Wolfen is half a mile ahead of the rest of the team. And he's punished for it. And it's given them a way back in. Yeah, yes, there's still utility with Koi, but there's the same to be said with NRG, and they've got a couple of guns here. Ardis has the rifle, as does FNS. Yeah, Ardis actually being given a oh. second or third shot, and thank God Shados finds that headshot. That was getting sloppy, getting messy, and now they're losing out on numbers. Drex going to try and at least bulk up some of the defense on towards C Long, and by all accounts, it's looking okay. FNS is going to have to try and find three sitting pretty deep towards Long. I think he knows that rifle is more valuable than the chance of him being able to convert into this round here. And even there with <laughs> that completely untraded first blood, which is a real concern. I mean, if anybody else is there to kind of solidify that C site hold with Victor, then it gets really concerning. Oh, God, because you imagine a swing from the back of Platt or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've questioned this a few times. Wolfen has been great for this, you know, creating space, but there's been a couple of rounds where Koi, they're stacked up as four along there. Like, yep. somebody should fill that gap. It, somebody should fill that gap. It feels like we, we have been complimenting him the way he's been approaching it, but it feels very selfless. But also then, okay, then work off the back of the benefit of him either taking that space or dying potentially. It's like you can benefit from it, even if he's just, you know, 
going head first for Halos. I'm kind of hoping we see a little bit of that. Maybe he's playing ahead of the timing they want. Maybe he's the one who's a little off saying this again. You're working with new players on stage as Wolfen is not an experienced player. It could player. be a synergy that, that can be tweaked further down the line. Oh, a bit no of a switch rest. up here though, Ardis. Ooh, he's, he's sticking around. What's going to force him off this? He knows about the cross as well. And Ardis is a nasty player with this operator. Here. Pull the trigger on the third oh, second. Oh, oh. Real close to it as well. And he feels that's a pressure point. Time to back away now. Does want to give that pendulum swing over towards Koi, who is still willing to try and take back this long pressure. He's a happy to fight for this as well. And actually, Victor's here with the lockdown available just in case things go wrong. Trex does have the Hunter's Fury for it. Ardis hasn't fully fallen away either. He no. still wants this one pick. But this is going to burn so much utility. If they are diligent about this, but I'm worried it's just going to be Wolf and taking a wonder. Well, there's no fault line. Now there is. Starzo's fault line just coming back online, as I said that. So the flash available. Okay. Oh, it's just sing long, fine Shados, it's gorgeous. NRG posting up pretty aggressively on these angles, not sitting deep by any means, and actually not falling back. But they have lost sight control. Gordimenta, so unaware, didn't even turn. Didn't even look towards it. And now just two on the site here, surrounded. No comfort to be found. Maybe can fall away too long, but they need to win a fight and find some safety somewhere. The chip damage coming out from Trex could have given them a second to breathe and think, but it ain't going to be for long. And set up here for the utility as well. Trex forced a little closer towards spawn. Oh, Trex. Not caught by the paranoia, though. He needs to. He needs to. He might be good. Oh, FNS oh, keeps no. on running, and Trex just falls. A stars are a 1v4. Position is pretty considered. They had players in sewer. They had CT dealt with. Either. There's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. He's dead and buried. NRG smothering Koi now. A little bit of a switch up here. Are this on that operator creating some problems for Koi to overcome? Actually, it's the second layer of Victor to find that follow-up kill here to really shut down a site. He said again. It's a little awkward with these smokes, great pockets to play behind here. Yep. And NRG playing off them time and time again. We saw it in the attacking half as well. So credit really to Som in that regard. Just mixing things up and leaving Koi guessing. Like you said, Coldementor none the wiser to somebody drifting back out of that smoke. Eight to nine though, scoreline still close enough. Still got to buy behind this for Koi as well. Blaze Storm to offset that. So you're almost looking a little he healthier behind this purchase than an LG are. Let's get that spacing right with Wolfen here. Ardis, present. Sees nothing beyond this though. That's just now, garage control taken. Previously, this ended up on a re hit towards C. This is when Koi paused outside, waiting mm. for that utility cooldown, but it looks like. Crashies might be tested here on A-Long. The Aldrone is from very, very deep in spawn, so not going to get deep information. Actually, the response is there from Crashies, and he should find info, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Well. The Hunter's to slow things down. Oh, it's a double two. tag. This could be massive, and it is. Crashies finding Golamenta. Oh, another two tags. He's done so much damage in the lockdown just to make sure he's safe. Look at the time. They've got 35 seconds, and they've got no information. There's still two on C, Lauren. Garage is a player in it. This, the, the, uh, Wolfen's running into his death. He has no idea. They already cleared it earlier, but Som's here. Perfect play from oh Som. My God. Positioning divine. He's read the round. And now Trex, it's a formality again. And Som played that so well. The positioning was great. Credit to Crashies. <laughs> you cannot question that round. That is poetry in motion from NRG there. Crashes with the Aldo and just finds the blind tag. But it's the Hunter's Fury. I think the reveals another two or three players here. Insane value from that ultimate. And then, you know, everybody barreling towards this Seasight hit late on behind the lockdown. Three of them are minus 80. Yeah. They're squishy walking into yeah. Som in Garage. A beautiful round. So well structured from NRG. That was really and that's nice. Crashies on an island. I, I cannot fall how he played that. I mean, also as well, just to know, Victor is a supportive role there. Even if Crashies doesn't find anything off the Hunter's Fury, the lockdown is immediate. It's there. 
No no doubt to it, no second guessing. If they kill crashes, they can't take sight. Exactly, that's time for rotations. We can still, it, it's, it's great foresight. They're so aware of what they need to achieve. They instantly bail their player out. How many times are we saying, Shados is on an island, where's the support? Finally, yes, Trax did come through on map one, but again, this sort of synergy is is what you expect from that core coming in. But it's the confidence as well behind that setup from LRG. Two yeah. people just absolutely cemented on Seaside. Some drifts into garage, tucks into a dirty little off angle. I think finds three, yeah. maybe even four by the end of that round. Yeah, he pushed out for it. But it's the confidence that NRG have that that's going to pay off. They're, they're, they're playing so well here. And unfortunately, quite with, with the way this map has gone as well, it's another round that just feels like they're chasing their own tail. They're feeling very red. Even that close owl drone, it's, it, it feels like they're feeling so red in this game and, and NRG weren't even there. They were just in the right places behind it. But again, we go through. We look at what we've got here. Wolfen, maybe depending on the knives, everyone else able to fashion a purchase. Operator still in the hands of artists. Not really have to see that sing just yet, but it could be the round now. And Wolfen, first on the chopping block, potentially. Ardis. Could be a big test for him here. Flash goes up and the swing. Uncharacteristic miss, but a second by the cherry. He knows he's under pressure. Wolfen trying to close the gap here, chase them down. They're actually going to slip out through CT. All the players backing away from this one. So yeah, do have the Rolling Thunder available for this. And do they opt to actually pull the trigger here Off as the park comes through? Starzo maybe going to get pinned onto site here. He's in trouble. He's in real trouble. Wolfen wins one fight towards Garage, but it's an absolute bloodbath in favor to NRG here. Back on the side here, Wolfen needs more. Needs massive impact. He ain't going to get a shade off. Needs it. Doesn't get it either. It's NRG clean on the play back in. And now it's 11 calling. And NRG willing to answer. They are looking good, Mike. You know, the response is there in the second half. Have to see how it lies here for Koi. Again, questions start to rise now about the funds. Still got three ultimates to work with. <laughs> it's not Jeez. a comfortable purchase. And they're, they're really at a crossroads here. A three round deficit, NRG knocking on the door of map and series point, elimination point for Koi. Yeah, we, we can't stress enough how hard this call is gonna be. And the buy's changed already, Mike. If you caught a glimpse of it before, they're going like armors, they're going rifles, yeah. they're trying to scrape this together. They know they need this round. It's been three on the trot now it's for NRG. Die. It's time to wake up for Koi. They have to try and pin all these pieces together that have been lacking. And Som respecting this hit needs to get the hell out of danger. Seasight is theirs. Spike is on the way. Gonna have the same opportunity for the retake here. So Koi, he's felt like that was the one thing that went wrong for them. It's an open plant, Nano Swarm down. Wolfen going to entertain the idea of sticking around for it. Actually, Shados considering the lockdown here. But look at the flank. Four players on the flank, and Trax is util in hand. There's no one here. If he crests that corner, paranoia. that's too caught with the paranoia. It's going to call all the players in. Starzo takes a whole lot of damage. He's down to 6 HP. They got to buy time. They got to do something. Gornamenta dives into the jaws of it. Trax stunned. NRG! Battering them down at a 3v2. Wolf and Azazo still alive in a switch of position. Some dips in towards the site, avoids the stun. Still fighting, still standing, tapping on the spike for Wolf and he's behind both of them. Finds them. Oh my oh, god. What a time for the young gun to find some form. Everybody falls though, and that was the force purchase from Koi. They're going to come out of that licking their wounds. Going to have to scrape together another purchase. Further investment here in terms of the ultimate. But it's do or die, and they deliver around here. They find their ninth. It was desperate, clawing into this. And I mean, it was just manic. Uh, I mean, thank God for this. Starzo was on, what, three HP as well there. Just bleeding. The walking wounded. Unable to do too much. Nine to 11. What buy do they have this time? Oh, Spectres. I think it was only like two rifles I saw as well. So getting harder and harder to make this one work. And it looks like a rinse and repeat. Run it back from the last round. Som dips to CT, and you can see the side taken. Wolfen and Shados need to have impact here. Trex has his ult as well. And we're going to see the plant coming through. You can say with a couple of Spectres, they can't actually rely heavily on this long setup either. But they're all going to it. I, I mean, it's <laughs> only the Hunter's Fury to play off here. From Tell me lock. they're going to get proactive through mid. Tell me something, Mike. Tell me they re-clear Garage. It looks as if there's going to be Shados and Cold Amenta going that way. Victor immediately punished. Hunter's oh, Fury posted. That's going to catch Starzo and Trex, actually. And the counter all comes in. They need 
some value and it's fallen by the wayside. Trex and Golden Mental are lost to alive. He's sticking the fuse. It. He ain't moving. He's gonna hold this one down. It's all falling to pieces oh, no. right in front of their eyes. 12 for NRG and Koi are left in tatters. It's almost the same as the way this half started as well. Like I said, with just the Hunter's Fury and three, three or four Spectres even in the yeah. mix there, it doesn't feel like a comfortable position to sit all the way on C long. And the thing is here, Coleman is the second layer of that flank, but as soon as he shows his hand, he's dealt with. Coming to this and it's looking even bleaker. A blade storm to work with now, but scraps, odds and ends thrown into this for Coit. One rifle in the hands of Trex. And they're looking to spin the wheel. B site will be their Thank focus you, point here. There's so much of it on the ground still. Wolfen's going to take a fair amount of damage. Yeah, softened up, comfortable for Victor. No sweat for him. The smoke into play, and Koi gets sent back. They did not find the impact, but they can't even quickly springboard. Still util in towards Garage. Position now noted. They're not finding what they need here, but a quick flex towards C. Again, do they dare keep doing this? And Victor, he's on the hunt. He's feeling confident. He's got the voice beside him. Tracks on the flank, can only do so much. Finds one. What? What is that from Victor? Oh, my God. What? In God's name is that? Golden Menton now surrounded. <laughs> he's dead. He's buried. And Victor sends him to his grave. What the hell was that from Victor? To close our haven. Absolute insanity. But NRG comfortably closing things out. Sending Koi home on day one here in Sao Paulo. They got made to work on map one. Map two, they came alive. They make it out of the pit here. This is fatal. And it, it, I've got to say it, Koi looked good in glimpses. You saw potential. You saw map one look incredible. And there they are on the screen. A glimpse at what is to come for this side. Huge potential. We have to give credit. Trex, big performance from him in my eyes. We saw a couple of Shados, of course. Amazing work on map one, but they lost out the longer this series. I mean, dare I say, I think Trex actually finished top of the scoreboard overall for both maps. So, yeah. absolutely insane performance from him as well. Wolfen having actually a pretty impressive map too. Couple of Try. questions on the second layer there for this for this Koi composition, or actually this, this team as a whole, but he definitely delivered here. Yeah, 14 and 20 on the scoreboard, but he found six first bloods. And you see NRG starting confidently here in Brazil. That's huge. By the end of the series, let's let's just roll our minds back a little bit. A 9-3 on Icebox and started raising a few questions oh, yeah. there. Oh yeah. We were Some the one to flip map one. What a quiet little MVP he was at Our times. streamer. <laughs> right? You gotta look. Never in doubt. Not for a second. Tier three, like <sighs> you're ready to go. Yeah. But you've got to say. The diligence to come back, that's the pedigree. When we talk about experience and we talk about cores and we talk about the three players there and everything else and the coaches, this is what we mean about it. They have that depth, they have that synergy. You saw it with crashes and Victor, especially on that one to even make yeah, it close. Yeah, that dynamic duo delivering so many rounds. Even where just that momentum starts to build for them, they're happy to just dig deeper and deeper every single time. And crashes, so many scenarios once again. I mean, a highlight player for that previous Optic roster goes without saying. And you got to, in, in my mind as well, <laughs> I'm actually quite happy that I'm not just singing Artis' praises. Absolutely. Because I know Artis is good. If you watch Valorant, everyone knows Artis is very good. And also, uh, just to come back to that, that conversation as well about Ye being replaceable, whether or not he is or not, Artis is plug and play. And the fact that he yep. has that deep rage and pull, like I said, you marry that up with the, the, the support system that, in my eyes, was one of the best in the world. Hands be down. it the best in the world yes. in the form of Crashies and Victor. And actually, give this roster a little more time. I'm, I'm really excited to see how they experiment with that. No, no, I'm in complete agreement. I can't wait to see what they can do here. Now, credit again. It's going to be very easy to almost forget about this performance. But Map 1, I genuinely feel, could have gone either way. Genuinely. Incredible diligence from NRG to pull that one back. But overall, what a fantastic welcome to lock-in. This is game one on day yeah. one. Yeah, we're just getting started, which is crazy. Uh, I mean, honestly, with this matchup was, was such a banger to open with as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, and I think it delivered on all fronts. Even if this is, say, it's two maps and Koya going home, 
uh, what a taste of what's to come. Yeah, that's that's the thing for me now. Is like this is just planting the, the seeds. Bar's of, set. <laughs> it's set high. Like good luck to anyone else today trying to you know maybe catch up to that because that was a gorgeous game to watch. I think it's a lot of what we expected. In my mind, I think it was a lot of kind of. You know, some of the players standing out that we wanted to see, a lot of the yep. boxes were ticked here, but overall, I'm I'm incredibly happy, even though it's a 2-0, the caliber of game we so got on day one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think I, we're are we ready for an MVP vote. I don't know if we are. Do you okay. know what? Mike, who's your MVP just briefly? Some. Alright. No hesitation, some. obviously. I I I don't know. I'm thinking like either tracks for me. Uh, anyway, look, enough from us. You're bored of us. So we've got other casts coming up. We've got other games, and it's going to be brutal throughout the day. So do stick around, because there's more coming up later. Run. We have a massive game coming up for you guys. 
guys, it is NRG versus Koi. This is single elimination, do or die, and only one team can make a perfect run. Lock-in starts right here, right now. Let's go, baby! This shouldn't be a problem here, Mike. No, definitely not. Should be a comfortable oh, 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 oh. clean-up as well. Shados, Ooh, he's Shados. three. Rez comes in, do they get a partner? Shoot! From Soft, giving NRG the finest amount of hope. What a game. I bloody missed Valorant. How much more can they do? It's not looking likely. Wolfman desperate, and the jury has decided it's NRG somehow making it to 13. What a brilliant game that was. You can never count these guys out. NRG unable to back away from this. Might get the first on one. They line up a little, but actually it's called a Mensa. <laughs> But NRG comfortably closing things out, sending Koi home on day one here in Sao Paulo. Welcome back, everyone. That was the Prime Gaming post match highlights. I'm Ying Su, and I'm back here once again with Achilles and Mimi. NRG, they live to see another day. They beat the Night 3 curse, they beat the opening game curse, they beat the EU team curse. Mimi, they turned a new leaf. They really did. This was such an impressive start for a squad like NRG. We didn't really know what to think about these new players coming into the roster. Is Artis going to fit in as well as Ye? Is Som going to be able to perform? And both of those questions, a resounding yes here for NRG. Yeah, it was incredible. I mean, Hypox said it right there at the end. Plug and play is yeah. Artis. He came into this, and granted, it was a little bit rough for everybody, I wouldn't say, on the side of Icebox. Him playing the Sage as well doesn't allow him to play as aggressively as he would like. But then as we got into Haven, it was a big turnaround for him. It was a turnaround for absolutely everybody. I mean, Artis comes out on top with the top frag, the top ACS, seven first kills as well. The guy started the pop, and it's good to see him back on the jet. Yeah, I mean, Seth, you were setting this up at the half, but their defensive side was so strong. The synergy between Artis and Finesse is everything we wanted to see for this team. This doesn't look like a brand new squad. It looks like a squad that has had that time to put together something fantastic. Oh, but this round right here, this is just crashy. I mean, he's been an absolute god this entire time. It's the blind tag. I mean, Coldman is just trying to make his way through that smoke, dodge out on the drone and get into a sneaky position, but he's not ready to get blind. Tag, and then from here, it all just comes tumbling down. The lockdown to flush everybody over towards the C site. There's so little time remaining. And then Sam is just perfectly poised time and time again to rack up these multi frags. We saw him get that ace on Icebox. He comes away with a 4K right there in that clip for his debut with his team. It was just absolutely a stellar performance from him. Yeah, and Will Coy had their moments in that map. It felt like through and through, Finesse had Coldamenta beat in the call. On that defensive side, Energy was always ahead of the curve. They were always ready for that rotation, stacking the right side. It was really, really excellent. Just classic FNS game. Yeah, it was a little bit brutal for Coy in the yeah. end. Obviously, we only saw two masks from them, and they had to go home. But there were flashes of brilliance, Trex. What a game. And Shados debuting on, on a role that he's never played before as well. <laughs> Uh, this this roster obviously needed time, and they have time to do that before the next. I split. feel like that was like my little free sample. I like I got a taste <laughs> of it. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Now you need to purchase the whole thing. But I want more. Yeah. I want more. I, I think this team, even if they lost, even if they kind of got rolled over in that second map, what they showed us on Icebox was really good. And there's a ton of potential for Koi. For sure. And I mean, it's one of the things that they talked about when we had the interview with them and you know Brennan Sideshow. They said, you know, we're kind of still experimenting with things. This is a bit of a test for us, and if these roles don't work out, then maybe we shuffle it around again. So they're still in that building structure, and that's the kind of the point of this this whole tournament is just to get some initial displays out there, yeah. see how you fare, and if you have to make adjust adjustments based off this before the VCT really kicks off, then you go ahead and you do so. So I think that we might be seeing some differences, but even if they stick with the same roles, give it some more time to build up some extra cohesion and you could see Koi becoming a very powerful force within the region. I mean, like I said, Shados never played Kildred before. It comes out and he looks great. Uh, but again, a team we have to say goodbye for, goodbye to. And I feel like this is going to be a bit of a theme. Single elimination, we're going to have to say goodbye to a lot of teams uh, over the next couple of weeks. Now, we asked 31. you guys on social media uh, for the in zone player of the match. And the results are in. And you guys at home chose that.
That's our streamer. Okay. It is Som and very much well deserved, Mimi. Yeah, some doubters right now are absolutely quaking because for his very first big match on a big LAN, on that big stage, he did absolutely fantastic. Slotted into the controller role excellently. That's something new for him. Before he was a flex player in old NRG, it was really built up around him. He got to play so many different agents and have so many opportunities to take charge. But here, new rule, new, or excuse me, no new role, new team, no problem. Tough to say, but good for him. It was really, really good. And one of the biggest things that we questioned coming into this was how does he step in? Because not only just artists replacing Ye, but how does he step into Marv's shoes? And honestly, it was great. I mean, this is just the first round. Obviously, as we go deeper and deeper, he's going to get tested more and more. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. But for now, I mean, this is definitely something to keep your eyes on because this was a fantastic debut on a large stage. I mean, if it does feel like it gets harder from here as well, you know, he has to keep it up. That's the thing about Marv Dinier. The reason we rate them so highly is the consistency. Sure. So uh, are we, uh, is there some early days copium already, you guys? You feel like those shoes are being filled? I don't think it's copium. I think it's yeah. very reasonable to say that this team looks really good and it's that supportive line that is doing it. That same support structure is still here in NRG. Well, the show has been missing some uh, boomer energy. Uh, I, I didn't write this. I'm really sorry, Golden Boy. So I'm let's not. send it over uh, to GB, You're old. who I'm is standing up. by with Victor in the Verizon post-match interview. Sure, Yinsu, you totally didn't put that into the script to then just call me a boomer. Anyway, I'm Golden Boy, and of course, it's a joy to be back, and I'm also joined by Victor from NRG. First things first, you may notice it's a little hot in here in Brazil, so actually, I'm gonna, hold on, join you real fast. Give me a second. Ah, there we go, very nice and warm now. Ah, feel refreshed. Does it feel good to come off that stage? Not coming off stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's get down to brass tacks here because look, uh, the the reality is uh, we've always talked about how you know, former Optic, you guys always had these slow starts. You always struggled against these EU teams. Yet you guys seem to be exercising all of your demons here, uh, and and you didn't even realize it, which is the even better part. Uh, how does it feel to kind of come out here and get a real big win early on in this tournament? Uh, yeah. So obviously we were known for slow starts last year. Um, we're not really sure why that was the case. Uh, I think one of the things we started to do was Chet suggested that we start DMing before games, <laughs> which sounds weird, but that wasn't something we were doing before. Really? Yeah, so, so that's something we started doing now. And then, yeah, thank God the slow start only lasted like a half. But Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, we were, I remember uh, FNS, we went back to the ready room after the first round. He was like, guys, please, no more slow starts. No more. <laughs> Because it's so rough when you start down 1-7, the other team has all the momentum, yeah. they have the ultimates, yeah, so no more slow starts for us, hopefully. Yeah, well, I mean, so far, so good for you guys, right? And, uh, you know, uh, speaking of how, how this competition works, I mean, this is a very unconventional format in comparison to what we've had in the past, right? BO3, single elimination, this is the most unforgiving type of bracket with some of the best players in the world. Now, I want to get your thoughts on it just as a player coming in, because. This is tough. I don't envy you guys. Uh, yeah, so uh, we're a team that like likes to study the other team and like have a good idea of what they do before games. Yeah. And that wasn't something we were able to do, obviously, for this uh, Koi match. But now that we've gone through the first match, uh, we have t we're going to have data on the other teams. And as far as the tournament format goes, it's definitely rough. You want to get one chance. Um, thank do, God. Do you it, prefer that? Do you prefer uh, that? I wouldn't say I prefer it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe now I prefer it because we won the first game. But if we lost, I would. <laughs> but have if you said, were on an airplane yeah. back home, you'd be like, "Oh no!" <laughs> if we format. lost, I would. I would have said I hate this format. But uh, I don't know. It's working out for us, I guess. Yeah. Well, and also what's been working out for you guys too has been, you know, integrating Sam as well as Artists into the lineup here. Sam, kind of the holdover for NRG, and then Artists, a complete left field pick uh, that caught all of us off guard. But we were all very excited to see it happen because of what he could bring to the table, especially in the op role. What I guess has been the integration like for those guys? Has it been fun working with them to get this? system going? Uh, fun is definitely one way to put it, but uh, I'll start with Sam. Uh, Sam. We all know, our whole team has known Sam, like, even before Valorant. So as far as, like, chemistry goes and playing together, yeah. that wasn't even an issue to begin with. And that goes for artists as well. As Like, yeah, as weird as that sounds, he's from a different region. We didn't really know him before playing with him. Uh, the first time we met him was like for a, a content shoot, and, and he like the first time we met him, we were, like, the first thing we saw was like this guy just loves to make jokes. Yeah. He doesn't know when to stop making jokes, and the artist is just he's just similar to all of us as people. 
So he's just really easy to work with. That's awesome. Now, before we uh, we send it to a break, just want to ask real fast, real fast. I noticed you guys were floating Lotus at the end there. Is it is this something you want to give me, or are you trying to plead the fifth right now? My lips are sealed. Uh -huh. My lips are sealed, but stay tuned. I tried, everybody. You can't blame me. Right. Victor, appreciate you, brother, and congratulations Thank on you. a big victory. For now, though, I'm going to go ahead and turn on this fan because your boy's sweating out here, and we are going to have plenty more games coming up right after this. You don't want to miss it, of course. This is VCT Lock, and we'll see you on the other side.